Okay, so in today's video, I'm gonna to try to finish up this motorcycle map that I started working on last month. So this is part two of the tutorial. If you wanna check out the first part where I map out all these little villages and the cities in this particular department where I live in France, I'll link to that down in the video description. And once again, I'm using Adobe After Effects with a premium extension called GeoLayers 3 to put this together. If you wanna learn more about GeoLayers 3, check out all those other links down in the video description. So for the next step, I wanna focus on the background here. So I'm gonna go up to our map comps and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this map comp and I only want to duplicate the map comp I don't want to duplicate the containing comp and I'm gonna rename it Sarth background and I'm gonna go ahead and click link view because I want this to automatically attach and do any or follow the movements of our foreground map here you can see the new map comp right here and it is indeed linked to the main map comp However, it has placed this as well as the anchor layer on top of all the other layers. So I just need to grab both of these and I'm gonna bring them down underneath this map comp. Actually, I'm gonna undo that because before we do that, take a look at this. If I solo this, you can see that it is in fact using the same alpha mat that was applied to our main map comp. So to have this as the background, I can simply invert this alpha mat right here by clicking this, and that's gonna give us just the background. Now, this might not be what you want. Let's say, for example, you wanna actually blend in the map on top with the background, then you would wanna just remove this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this mat off. So it really depends on the particular workflow you're going for. So now I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna bring this underneath the main map comp, and let's turn off the solo keys here to see it. So now you can see we can't really tell the difference between the background and our main map comp. So I need to start to add some effects and really try to pull this out. So first I could just grab the background, hit T for opacity, and simply bring this down to 50, and then right away that's gonna make the department stand out. Now I'm gonna to go to the main map comp here, and I'm gonna add a drop shadow effect. I could add it to this map comp. However, I'm gonna create a shadow layer that I can basically have separate from everything else. So to do that, I just need to go grab the Sarth shape here and I can draw this out. Or actually, I can just grab this one here that we're using as the mat. And I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate it. And I'm gonna drag this underneath our main map comp, but above the background. So if I turn this on and I solo it, you can see now we have this shape right here. I'm gonna call this Sarth Shadow. And now what I wanna do with this is I wanna go up to the Effects and Presets panel. If you can't see it, go to Window, select Effects and Presets. And I'm gonna search for Drop Shadow. Now I'll grab Drop Shadow, place it on Sarth Shadow. And what I wanna do is I wanna have this as a shadow only layer. So right down at the bottom, you can hit shadow only. I'm gonna zoom in here on the comp so that we can see what we've got going on here. Now I'm gonna to start to kick up the distance so that this pulls out. Maybe we'll do something like 50 and then start to bump up the softness, maybe something like 75, you know, play with the parameters until you get something that you like. All right, that's looking good. It's definitely standing out more. Now I'm gonna add a Gaussian blur to the background here. I just wanna blur it out a little bit. So I'll search for Gaussian blur, and I'm gonna grab it and drop it directly onto the background, and we'll set this to something like 15. Don't want it to be too strong. That's helping draw more attention to our foreground map. However, it's still looking quite uniform, so I'm gonna actually drop a gradient layer between the two map comps here. So I'm gonna go grab the rectangle tool, and I'm gonna click on fill, and I'm gonna select radial gradient here. Click OK. Make sure you don't have any other layers selected so that it's gonna draw its own individual shape layer. Now with this selected, I'm just gonna double click on the rectangle, and that will give me a rectangle perfectly sized to the composition. And you can see the gradient here, it's black and white, and we have the two little controllers to control the end and the start of the ramp. So I actually want this to come from the top left corner. So I'm gonna grab the start here. I'm gonna move it right to the corner and then I'm just gonna spread this out. I'm going to actually, let's bring this beneath our main map comp because I actually want, uh, make sure it's below the shadow. I wanna sample these colors here. So rename this gradient. And then once again, go grab the color selector here and I'll go grab the color stop on the left Grab the color picker and we'll set that to some kind of brown color here. We'll bring the brightness down a little bit, maybe something like 35. Okay, now I'll go grab this other color stop, grab the color picker, and we'll set it to a green color. Uh, maybe a little bit brighter here, something like that. 
Now I'm gonna go grab the opacity here and we're gonna bring this down to 50% and that should give us something that's halfway decent here. Now I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer as a final touch here and I'm gonna put this above the gradient but below the shadow, call this noisy vignette and this will be for our, you guessed it, our noisy vignette. Ting, right here. And that's gonna allow us to, we can grab the vignette and see that the point of interest is up here. That's looking pretty good actually. And the noise is good and the noise is also, we're probably gonna wanna add a noise to this gradient as well, just because it can get some banding on it. You know, when you export, looks a little blocky. So I'll add another noise on this just in case. I'm gonna go back to the gradient and I'm gonna actually grab the gradient. I think I need to make a little bit of an adjustment here. So grab this and I'll pull this back because I'm not seeing enough green here. All right, so there we go. That's looking a lot better. You can see how many little things I did just to make this stand out, including the shadow, gradient, blur, vignette. Now we can create a scale bar. Go over here and click on run script file. And then right down here you have scale bar. Click on this. And we want to select the Sarth map comp and we'll put it on the right. So now we have our little scale bar. This adds a text element as well as a shape element, and they're both black, so I need to come here and change this color. We wanna turn this up to brightness of 90, and we'll change this one as well. Let's go to the character panel, and change this to 90 as well. So we have two white elements, and we can increase the size of these. Maybe make this 50. Now let's create a legend. Now for this, I have three different objects here. We have towns, we have villages, and then we have the star for the city. So the way that GeoLayers works with these point objects is it's a simple ellipse that's set to a size of one and that has a stroke element. And then the stroke element has a width, which gives it the size. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is how he has it set up. So for example, let me show you what I'm talking about. You go over here, grab the ellipse tool, and I've turned off the fill here, and I've turned on the stroke to this white color, and this is set to 20 pixels. So right here, if we go back to the layer styles and we look at our layer styles here, we have villages and towns, and I set towns, if you go to edit styles, I set towns to a stroke width of 20, and villages, are set to a stroke width of eight. So now if I come over here to the ellipse with this stroke element, so this stroke is set to 20, I'm gonna hold shift and double click on ellipse. So here we have this ellipse with the stroke. Now what I wanna do is open up the ellipse shape group, and then you go over here to size and you just set this to one, and that is the trick. So we have this set to one, and now as you adjust the width here, it's gonna make your point bigger, and it gives you this point. So now you can see I have the shape layer here and it's the same size as our town. So I'll call this legend town. I'm gonna move it over here because we want this to be over here. We're probably gonna create a pre-comp here. And now for the villages, those are a stroke of eight. So all I need to do here is simply hold control and hit D to duplicate this. And then I'll rename it, I'll call it villages. And then up here for stroke width, set this to eight. And now I can grab this one, hold shift, and move it up. And now we have the size for village and the size for town. Now just be aware that these are at a scale of 100. So if you're moving your map around at all when you drew these out, these are going to be different sizes and you're not going to be able to do this particular technique. However, for this particular animation, I'm only going to be animating the routes. I'm not going to be doing any kind of scale or zoom moves, so I'll be fine here. Now I'm going to quickly add text to my legend here, and I'm going to speed this up so we don't have to sit through a couple of minutes of just watching me do this because it'd be very boring. All right, there we go. And now I'm going to add a title graphic here. So I'm going to go up here, and we'll just type the word Sarth. We want to center this one up. Go to the Align tool. We want to center it in the composition here. And I'm going to use a different font. Let's use this font called Rough Love. And I'm just gonna crank this way up. We'll do something like 750. There we go. Kind of position this over here, and now I'm gonna change the blend mode. We'll do something like overlay so that it blends in with both the background and the foreground here. And to make this text pop even more, I'm gonna hold control and just duplicate this, and now you'll see it's gonna pop a little more. All right, this map is almost done. 
Now I'm going to add this image I got of my motorcycle right here. Let's put it down over here. All right, so this is looking great. So now we have our good base map here. And the only thing, once again, that's going to be animated on this map are the routes. So let's do an example here. So I've recorded a bunch of my routes over here on Strava. You can actually download these as GPX files. So right over here, I'm going to click on this. And to bring that into GeoLayers, you just come over here and you hit the Add Features to Browser and then do Import File. And you can see right here is my GPX file. And now I'm going to go select a layer style to draw this out. So I'm going to edit this style and just duplicate it. And we'll call this uh, Motorcycle Route 1. Maybe we'll have a couple different styles because we got to test out how we like to look here. I'll do a really thin stroke of three and we'll keep this white. This is looking fine. We can change it at whatever time. And maybe we'll do a blend mode of add, click apply. So now I can just draw this out or I can automatically animate it. So I'm just going to animate it over the course of eight seconds or seven seconds. So I'm going to bring my playhead to the beginning here. I'll click on draw features and I'll do animate feature path. And we're going to do this animation over seven seconds, create animation. Now, if we play this animation back, you can see I now have my animated route. And it's not doing one fluid, solid movement, and that's because it's pulling the time information from those coordinates from the GPX file. And you can see that reflected down here in the keyframes. If I go to the actual route layer, you can see there's a keyframe basically for every individual frame. So if you want to manually do this, I would add another trim paths. I would turn this one off and then go to add trim paths and simply add another one. You can just animate the end here and you can manually go from zero to 100 and now you'll have two simple keyframes and it's gonna go at a very uniform pace. And there you have it, I've created my motorcycle route map. However, I am gonna make some additional changes here like basically composition and um, placing things, like I wanna line these elements up, maybe move the map over here to the right, move the motorcycle over here and move the title over here. So I'll probably experiment with a couple of different looks. Big shout out to my tier three patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Mike and Sandra over on YouTube at Flimmy Plus One, Ryan, Josh, and Alex. Thank you all so much for making this video possible.